Civic Center Park this morning ahead of the big Cinco de Mayo parade. Do we need a jacket if we want to be out there for the parade this morning? If you're going to be out here as early as now, I'd say so, hence why I'm wearing a jacket. It's in the 30s right now, but it is a gorgeous morning here in downtown Denver with blue skies. Can't find any clouds really other than a few high cirrus clouds. And looking back to the west, we also have good visibility too. So a nice start to the day. It is going to be a pleasant afternoon, but we could be dodging a few afternoon showers, but the threat for that is very minimal. I think you'll be able to just maybe leave the jacket in the car if you're going to be coming out here to Cinco de Mayo Festival. It goes on from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. in and around Civic Center Plaza. We'll be learning more about the event throughout the morning, and you can find out more online by going to Cinco de Mayo Denver.com. Now, as I said, this morning it is a little bit cool, warranting the jacket in the 30s right now in Denver, 31 for Parker, so just under the freezing mark there. And in Castle Rock, it's also 36, a little bit cooler on the Eastern Plains, Fort Morgan at 28 degrees. We also have 20s as you go up in elevation to the foothills and the mountains. Satellite and radar is showing the fairly quiet conditions statewide, not really seeing much in the way of precipitation. Of course, just those few very high thin clouds that are appearing. And we'll see more of those as the afternoon wears on, but we shouldn't see any rain really coming from them until after about 4 p.m. or so. I'm going to include a 10% chance for a few very isolated showers. You have a better chance of finding those in the foothills and in the mountains. With a high today of 57 degrees, that's going to be very comfortable for being out here. You know, a year ago today, it was 88 degrees. We set a record for May the 4th last year, but today will actually be about 10 degrees below the average. So very comfortable for being outdoors today. We'll show you the seven day planner coming up, which does have a little bit of a, a, a warm up, but also some better rain chances in the week ahead. But rain chances, not snow chances for us this week. I'll explain coming up. Christine. Hey, we'll take that. All right. Thanks, Maureen. The funeral director in charge of burying Boston bombing suspect Tamara Lindsay Nyev's body is having trouble this morning finding a place to do this. Peter Steffen says that protesters have gathered outside his business, upset that he even decided to handle the suspected terrorist burial. Stefan says everybody deserves a dignified burial service, no matter the circumstances. New video this morning now of fierce flames burning overnight. This is happening in Glendale, California. Cooler, calmer ocean air is moving ashore right now, raising humidity there and even bringing chances of rain by tomorrow, which is good news and that should help firefighters against the flames. But right now it's still burning out of control this morning. Here's ABC's Clayton Sandell. On the front lines this morning, an all-out battle to get the upper hand on a fire that in one day tripled in size. A shift in the weather is bringing cooler but more erratic winds. It's swirling around. It comes from every direction. 4,000 homes are still threatened. All of a sudden, our front field got fire, and it was right in front of the house. Um, we put it out with shovels, tractor, basically used whatever we could. KABC reporter John Gregory watched as flames raced toward a naval base. There are structure protection crews from all over Southern California here. They're focusing on this CB readiness training facility. They're trying to protect it from these flames. Amazingly, no homes have been destroyed, thanks to nearly 2,000 fire firefighters, aircraft, and even residents. 18-year-old Brittany Smolarski was helping evacuate horses when we spotted her using only a bottle of water and her riding boots to stomp a sudden spot fire. The smoke overpowering. But she beats back the flames until the cavalry arrives. I've never been that close to a fire and I've Wow, <laughs> that smoke is pretty deadly. I'm just trying to protect everything that I can. I don't want my barn to burn up. This morning, you can actually feel the higher humidity in the air. It's not supposed to be as dry today or as hot. It was a record 96 degrees here yesterday. It's supposed to be about 20 degrees cooler today. Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Camarillo, California. We are nearing the end of the sensational four-month Jody Arias murder trial. The case is now in the jury's hands. During closing arguments, Arias' attorney made this startling omission. It's not even about whether or not you like Jody Arias. Nine days out of ten, I don't like Jody Arias. What matters now, he told the jury, is that Arias is not guilty of first-degree murder. During this four-month trial, the 32-year-old has insisted that she shot and repeatedly stabbed her ex-boyfriend, Travis Alexander, because she had to that she was a battered woman who finally lost it. New this morning now, one of Disneyland's most popular rides has reopened. You might remember the attraction was closed last month after the state officials said that safety rules 
or violated. While well, a contractor fell and hurt himself while he was cleaning Space Mountain's slanted roof, the contract company was fined, and the California Division of Occupational Safety wanted to find Disney. The company had a chance to appeal, but that deadline has passed. Two other rides closed as a precaution have also reopened this morning. A pepper spray attack on middle school students now has a 12-year-old girl facing charges. This is Hillsborough County, Florida, near Tampa. Investigators say the girl discharged the spray in a busy hallway full of students and teachers at the time. Three people were rushed to the area hospitals. The school district clearly not happy. Take a listen. You could imagine a, a hall full of kids who are having that effect. That's, uh, that's not a prank. That's very serious stuff. The 12 year old suspect is expected to be released to her parents. Everyone who was taken to the hospital has since been treated and released. Sandy Hook students in Newtown still need a school this morning. The task force entrusted with finding a place to build that school had this to say last night after a fourth meeting. We will not be making a decision tonight about a site. That's because there are now more options for the new location of Sandy Hook Elementary. Some include renovating or expanding already existing buildings, but a lot of parents want a new place and a new build. A fifth meeting is expected sometime next week. The Boulder Boulder is right around the corner, and we're helping you get ready. Coming up week seven of our 10-week training course, Ana Cabrera talks with a running expert with his week, uh, weekly advice. This is 7 News Now Saturday morning. We'll have more when we come back. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to 7 News Now Saturday morning. Here's a live look at uh, downtown. Civic Center Park will be packed this morning and this whole weekend actually because of Cinco de Mayo celebrations. And meteorologist Marie McCann, she's out there live this morning with all the details and what you can expect. You might need a jacket if you're heading out this early this morning. All right, we are just a little more than three weeks away now until the Boulder Boulder. The 10K is a Memorial Day tradition for a lot of people. Every week we've been bringing you tips to get you ready for the run this year. Here's Annika Burra with a running expert and today's training advice. One. It's week seven, so by now you're probably establishing a bit of a training routine. So let's get right to this week's training tip and bring in former Olympic marathon gold medalist Frank Shorter. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you. As always. Okay, let's get right to our training tip this week. Well, on Monday, you run easy just the way you have every week because you've gone a little longer on Sunday. It's basically a recovery day, and you're kind of charting out what you're going to do that week. 30, 35 minutes, as long as you're out there, you're doing it perfectly. Tuesday, second day, do what's called a tempo run. And what you're doing here is you're trying to start to get a feel for really what it's gonna be like 
to dole out your effort in the race. By tempo run, you mean an effort that's just below what they call anaerobic. You're still at a state of equilibrium. You're taking in enough oxygen. You're not going anaerobic, as they say, and it's just a feel. So warm up for five minutes and then go out and run about three miles at this effort that you feel I'm under control, but I'm right on the edge. Kind of perceived race yeah, pace. Yeah, perceived race pace, but back off a little to get this feel. Wednesday, you take off. Thursday, run 40 minutes. Friday, the cross training again. Saturday, take, take the day off. That important workout was the tempo run. And then on Sunday, again, get up to 45, 50 minutes of easy running and just be out there. Just be out there for that amount of time. And by week seven, you're really starting to get in better shape, but you might also start seeing some aches and pains start right. popping up. And that's where the idea of perceived effort and, and really paying attention to your body, listening to your body comes in. Because we talked in, in the first week about every morning even, or every other morning, taking your pulse to make sure that as you chart it, if you see it go up more than 10 beats a minute, maybe you're overtraining. Well, if you've done that, that's an indication of week seven. But the other is it's just natural. Maybe you're a little more sore, you're a little more tired, but maybe week seven is when you treat yourself to that massage, right? Perfect. Of course, forward because to. they have found that, you know, massage really does work in recovery. It really yeah. does, because recovery is all about rest and then circulation. Absolutely, and, and I have to say something, because I remember training when I was a, a college athlete, we would go in ice baths afterwards, and we've got the little creek oh, yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Is that a good idea to Absolutely. Get, your, get your muscles yeah, yeah. nice and cold? You, you can, and it's always after you stretch after you're warmed up, and, and if you have some sore muscles after a run, and it seems just a little more than usual, yeah, go down to the stream. Put little your bit legs of in icing. there. Oh, yeah. Never heard. Well, thank you again, Frank Shorter, for helping us out as we prepare for the Boulder Boulder. Next week, we're going to talk about race day specifically and what you need to bring to the race. For now, I'm Ana Cabrera, 7 News. If you'd like a training plan, text the word RACE to 46988 and you'll get a reply with a link to tell you what to do each day between now and the race. Again, that's 46988. We've also posted the complete 10 week training guide on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Just click on sports. All right, let's take a live look from Civic Center Park this morning. Cinco de Mayo celebrations happening there today, and meteorologist Marie McCann is there live this morning. We'll also give you a traffic heads up that could affect your commute this weekend in a little bit. Right now, let's check in with Maureen. Hey, Christine, beautiful start to the day down here at Civic Center Park. We'll learn more about Cinco de Mayo Festival coming up after the break. We'll also take a look at your weekend planner. Okay. Um, Andrea or Andrea? Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> I bet you didn't know there were three ways I to was say Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrea that fire in Glendale, with, did it triple in size? Do we know how big it is now? <laughs> California. Andrea. Uh, it's okay. I'll look it up. Right. I just thought it was in the An script. A N D R E A, and her last name, Barella. Barella. Um, B A R E L A. Wheat. It's okay. I'm looking it up now. And she's with Cinco de Mayo Fest. Uh, what's your title at Cinco de Mayo Fest? Well, I'm the development director for NewSed. Okay, she's the development director for NewSed, N E W S E D. 75 Acre Fire. And the coordinator for Cinco. Oh, she's the coordinator for Cinco de Mayo Festival. Is that it? So we'll say what to expect. You have an eyelash, right? I, do. On I that cut side. my bangs this morning, so. That, that could be it. That's probably what you're seeing. I tried to get the fire off. is nearly knocked down. Okay. This is a tweet that's from Friday afternoon. <laughs> so I'm like in your face, sorry. Andrea Barrella. This is CNN. Right. Is there any other ways to pronounce it? Am I missing it? I was one? tweeted from the firefighters, I guess. I just think of Andrea and I don't know if that's how she pronounced Andrea, it. Yeah. <laughs>
Welcome back to 7 News Now Saturday morning. Here's a live look at I-70 near Genesee this morning. The sun is coming out, trying to warm things up. 40 degrees right now down here in the metro area. And uh, it's a good weekend if you want to bring your family out looking for something to do. We're talking about the Cinco de Mayo celebrations going on at Civic Center Park. And meteorologist Marie McCann, she is live there ahead of the big parade that will kick off all the fun this morning. Good morning. Hey, Christine, good morning. That's right. We are located at 14th and Galapago, and this is where the floats are going to be setting up as the morning wears on. So we'll try to get some of that action in the uh, next few hours. But right now, I'm joined by the coordinator of Cinco de Mayo Festival, Andrea Barella. And Andrea, what can people expect that are going to be coming down here today? Of course, they have sirens going by right now, so sorry about <laughs> that. Timing, right? I know. <laughs> we can wait for the ambulance to go right by. And yeah, tell us a little bit about so what we can expect today, especially today. The parade kicks off the event, so you definitely want to come down and see that. The parade route is available for download under the events page on the Cinco de Mayo Denver.com website. So definitely want to check out the parade. The, the parade is like a bite of what everything is happening within the event. So there's that. Um, today we have the um, ch uh, chili green chili bowl cook off. And so that'll be a lot of fun. People can taste the chili. Mm -hmm. They can text in their votes. We'll give out prizes to, um, you know, the winner. We're featuring 10 restaurants this year. So, so definitely want to check that out. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, throughout the weekend, we have three stages of live um, entertainment. We have um, wonderful exhibits, over 250 vendors, um, lots of food, lots of really good food. And, um, and then Sunday, we have... Um, a taco eating contest and the Chihuahua races. So you'll definitely want to come out. There's things to do both days. So it's definitely going to be a good time. And it goes on from 10 to 8 both days. Yeah. And where do people park? Are there any suggestions for where they should go? Yeah, absolutely. One of the best places to park is the Cultural Center parking lot, which is located right next to the Art Museum um, off of between 12th and 13th on Broadway. Okay. Great place to park. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more affordable than some of the other lots, but there are lots like the one we're in now that surround the event, street parking, that kind of thing. Okay, yeah. excellent. Great information. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you can find more by going online to CincoDeMayoDenver.com. Yeah, and admission is free, and um, there's no tickets, so bring your cash. There's ATMs on site, so you don't have to buy tickets to buy food. Okay, so, yeah. excellent. Great right. info. Thanks so much. And, of course, the weather is great, too. If you remember last year, this weekend, it was it was pretty warm, if I remember correctly, yeah. wasn't it? Yes, it was. And we had a record high on this day <laughs> of 88 degrees. Why but this didn't morning, we get last week's weather. <laughs> you want the snow? <laughs> no, last last weekend's weather. Would That's have been right. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, this weekend is looking pretty nice. Oh, yeah. A little bit cool this morning. We have 36 degrees in Denver right now as we check in with the live conditions. It does feel a little bit cooler with the light wind. It feels like 31 degrees, and we have the wind only of about six miles per hour. There's a great view of uh, City Park from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. So if we check in with temperatures elsewhere in the state, you will find it's colder on the Eastern Plains, some 20s there, and also up in the high country, 20s for Aspen, Gunnison, and Leadville. So a cool start, but we should warm up very nicely into the afternoon. We have a weak disturbance that's gonna try to push through today, and with the warming during the afternoon, we will be able to generate some extra clouds that will produce some very isolated showers. And we see those on the future gas. I'm gonna take you to the front range view, and I'll start this at 9 a.m. Notice that it'll be dry for your early morning plans. Nothing's really getting in the way other than a few scattered clouds. Same with through lunchtime and even up to about 3 p.m. But notice that the uh, daytime warming will end up producing some uh, rain showers and even some snow showers in the highest peaks. At 5 p.m. there could be some more showers across the foothills and then passing through the metro area maybe between about 6 and 8 p.m. This chance is only at about 10 percent. I think most places will be dry so I wouldn't say canceling any outdoor plans, but just be prepared that it could rain very briefly through the afternoon. It clears out overnight, and we're in for more of the same tomorrow with partly to mostly sunny skies and then a few scattered showers. Here are your highs today across the front range. You'll see 50s, and although those will be comfortable, they're still about 10 degrees below average for this time of year. We're typically in the upper 60s for highs, cooler 40s as you go to Estes Park, Grand Lake, and Fraser. 
with overnight lows tonight there dropping down into the 20s. So your planner in writing 57 degrees, although it's bright and sunny now, there will be some scattered clouds in the afternoon, but comfortable throughout the uh, afternoon hours. And tomorrow will boost those temperatures up to about 60 degrees. Now your seven day planner does show a warm up into the mid 60s by Monday and Tuesday, the upper 60s. Now there are some chances for rain each day and some thunderstorms too. I'd say the best likelihood for those will be Tuesday through Thursday. So we'll have a few of those popping up in the afternoon, but with those warm temperatures, everything would be in the form of rain. Notice our overnight lows will be above the freezing mark too, but that will translate to some isolated snow showers in the high country, but nothing like what we had last week. And of course, all that snow has since melted and we're looking at a gorgeous day today for coming out to Cinco de Mayo Festival. Christine? Loving the sunshine. All right, thanks so much, Maureen. And that brings us to a traffic alert to tell you about the Cinco de Mayo celebrations shutting down some area roads this weekend. Today's parade heading down Welton from Colfax to 17th, then down 17th and across Broadway to Lincoln and ending at 13th. And roads around Civic Center Park will be closed for the event again today and tomorrow. By the way, 7 News, a proud sponsor of the Cinco de Mayo celebrations this year. We'll even have the 24-7 weather experience out there. Admission to the event, again, free. And you can find more information on the 7 News mobile app. But Cinco de Mayo isn't the only event going on this weekend. Later today, you can also celebrate Buffalo Bill's birthday on the top of uh, Lookout Mountain and enjoy the sounds of New Orleans at the Boulder Art and Jazz Festival. So for a full list of seven things to do this weekend, again, 7 News mobile app. Just download it. It's easy. The season that had high hopes ended quickly in the West Coast. We'll hear from the Denver Nuggets head coach George Carl at what went wrong for his team. But not all is lost. The Colorado Rockies leading their division right now, but would they hold off the Tampa Bay Rays? Sports is next. And this ball's. Good morning, everyone. The calendar reads early May. And guess who came into Friday tied for the best record in the National League? Your Colorado Rockies. There is a lot of baseball left, but they made a believer out of Matt Moore. The Rays ace roughed up. He was 5-0 and on the season. First inning. One aboard for Michael Kadir. Big fly to center. Over the wall. Cue the fountains. It was... Two zip. Next inning, Josh Rutledge over and out the opposite way. Rocks had a 3-0 lead. It was four all in the tenth. Live by the sword, die by the sword. That's Kelly Johnson who untied it. Rays a winner, seven to four. The first round of the NBA playoffs is like kryptonite for the Nuggets. It zaps their superpowers. The best season in franchise history ended with yet another one and done. Once again, Steph Curry played like a superhero. The Human Torch lit it up in the third of. Game six.
The lead was 18 in the fourth when the Nugs made their run. Andre Iguodala cut it to three. It was a two-point game with under 30 ticks on the clock. Wilson Chandler with two chances to tie it. Missed them both. The ninth time in 10 years, the Nuggets did not make it out of the first round. The day after, there was no sugarcoating it. I don't think any of us expected it to end this way. And I'm highly disappointed that it did. I think we made a big step this year, but it wasn't validated by a playoff win. Especially with the West being wide open this year from a lot of injuries and stuff like that. And it was just tough for us, you know, to not, you know, live up to expectations. If only Melo and the Knicks lost game six at Boston. Bradley Look at this. Celtics Avery on a 20 to 0 fourth quarter, quarter run. Down. Avery Bradley steal it, flush it within Anthony striking distance. But hold on, New York would weather the storm. Lead. Anthony had Dan 21. Knickerbockers close it out. They are into round two for the and first time since 2000. WWE in Memphis. Grizzlies had the Clippers fighting for their lives. Closing seconds, third quarter. It's Jared Bayless who will pull from 21 feet. He gets the basket at the buzzer. Grizzlies wrap it up. It wasn't even close. Sidney Crosby back on the ice. First game in over a month thanks to a broken jaw. He gave the Islanders something to chew on. A little over three minutes in, Crosby would find the net. Four minutes later, he did it again. Two goals for the kid. Islanders would run off the final three of the game. They tie up this series at one game apiece. Speaking of kids, eight-year-old Atticus Lane Dupree had a dream come true. Last year, he missed the final game of the season because he underwent treatment for cancer. The Make-A-Wish Foundation lined up a friendly against his favorite team, the Portland Timbers. Atticus not only scored a goal, the Green Machine, his team, they pulled off the upset. 3,000 fans on hand in Portland to root him on. And that's what you call a win-win. That does it for me on a Saturday. Go on out there and have yourselves a great day. 7 News now reviewing hundreds of pages of prison documents connected to Evan Ebel. The man police say gunned down Colorado's prison chief and a part-time pizza delivery man. We're looking into what transpired before he was released from prison. And we'll take you to Bangladesh where crews are still digging for bodies buried in the rubble of this collapsed building you see right there. You're watching 7 News now, Saturday morning. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so it's it's okay. I see it, Lufer. I hear you, Andy. Sorry. Yes, monitor wall. Here's a look at some of the top stories we're following this morning. Still no sign of this Greenwood Village woman this morning who Lisa Martinez Renteria was last seen leaving work Thursday morning from the Greenwood Athletic Club on South Quebec Street. Renteria was seen leaving with a man in a newer model black Jeep Cherokee style SUV. Jeffco deputies on the lookout for this man right there. They say he stole the identity of a 72 year old and then opened credit cards under that man's name. He charged more than $2,000 worth of merchandise from 
stores like Target and Kohl's, according to police. And here's a suspect uh, leaving area stores after using that man's credit card. No word on what caused a military refueling plane to go down in the mountains of Kyr Kyrgyzstan. This is video of investigators at the crash site. You're looking at there from the Associated Press. Two American crew members were killed in this. A third still missing this morning. The KC-135 crashed about 100 miles west of the airbase that the U.S. operates in the Central Asian nation to support military operations in Afghanistan. All right, let's take a live look out in California this morning. Now, flames still burning out of control in Glendale near Los Angeles this morning. You can see a lot of fire crews there. Thousands of homes are still threatened, many evacuated, up to 2,000 we're hearing this morning. Uh, none have been lost so far. We'll, of course, continue to watch this story as it develops in real time all throughout the morning. Meteorologist Murray McCann, in the meantime, live back here at Civic Center Park this morning there with a preview of all the festivities for the Cinco de Mayo celebrations this weekend. And Maureen, it's looking beautiful out. The sun is starting to come out, so that's good. Absolutely. It's a gorgeous start to the day. A little bit cool. We have temperatures in the 30s, but you can tell we have lots of sunshine. Now we're outside of Civic Center Park right now. We're at 14th and Galapago, and this is the staging area for the floats for the parade, which will take place at 10 a.m. So you still have some time to get down here. Roads are still open right now, but there are some barriers that they will be setting up as there will be a lot of closures in and around Civic Center Park today because the festival taking place from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. This goes on today and tomorrow, so if you can't get out here today, you have another opportunity on Sunday. Weather's going to be great both days. We don't see any big changes in our forecast between today and tomorrow, although we will have some cool temperatures in the morning like we have on hand right now. We have 30s right now for Denver and surrounding areas. Fort Morgan now up to the freezing mark. That was a little bit colder earlier in the 20s. We also have just 20 degrees in Grand Lake, 25 for Frazier and Georgetown, and 25 for Dillon. So there are some cooler spots up there, but conditions are dry statewide. We have just a few scattered high cirrus clouds, but no precipitation at the moment. This is the satellite and radar put together, and it's not showing anything. And through the afternoon hours, there's a 10% chance of a very isolated shower. This does not look to be anything that would ruin your outdoor plans today, but you may want to throw the light jacket in the car in case you do get under one of those showers. Most of the day will be dry and comfortable with highs in the 50s. Now, we do have a little bit of a warm-up in the seven-day planner, but more rain chances to talk about, too. I'll have those details coming up, Christine. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Maureen. 7 News now uncovering red flags about this man right here, Evan Ebel from before his release from prison. This is 7 News Now reviews hundreds of pages of prison documents. Ebo gunned down Colorado's prison chief and a part-time pizza delivery man. And 7 News reporter Marcia Zellinger found that Ebo was kept on the highest restriction of solitary confinement just 13 days before his release. On multiple occasions, parole leaders have told 7 News Evan Ebel had complied with his parole up until the day his ankle monitor triggered a strap tamper, an indication it may have been cut off. 7 News found that's not entirely accurate. Among the hundreds of pages of electronic documents we've reviewed, we discovered on February 21st, Ebel was found with a man at his home. That man is on probation. Based on Ebel's parole, he is not to associate with any person with a criminal record without permission of his parole officer. Even before he was released, Ebel showed a history of bad behavior and taunting, knowing he would get out in January 2013. In July, six months before his release, an officer notes Ebel said he would leave the country when released and not to parole as he has family that live outside of the U.S. On December 15th, more than a month before his release, officers report Ebel was not listening to directions. An officer wrote that Ebel said he had a, quote, lot to do when he got out. As a result of this behavior, he was placed on the highest level of solitary confinement. On January 15th, just 13 days before his release, Ebel did not attend his hearing to get out of solitary and was kept on the highest level. On March 14th, Ebel cut off his ankle monitor. He suspected of killing Nate Leone on March 17th, then Tom Clements on March 19th. On March 21st, he was killed in a shootout in Texas. These new documents reveal his cause of death, a gunshot to the forehead. While Ebo was misbehaving, he wrote three letters in the final six weeks of his prison sentence, and we first told you about them earlier this week. Well, in the letters, Ebo essentially asks if dangerous inmates should be around other human beings prior to release. He was released straight from solitary.
The Call 7 investigators continuing to break new information on the way the parole division handled Evan Ebel's case. And Call 7 investigator Teresa Marchetta found that Ebel's parole officer is a member of what's called the gang unit. It's a specialized unit created with the sole purpose of strictly and closely monitoring violent gang offenders in parole or on parole, excuse me. These officers get more training and also carry much lighter caseloads to make sure that their parolees don't abscond and commit more crimes in Ebel's case murder. Now, we're not releasing his parole officer's name this morning, but we've learned that he's also a member of another elite group of officers called the Special Response Unit. That is a tactical parole unit that works with other law enforcement to handle high-risk escapees and arrests. This is just the type of officer you'd expect the Department of Corrections to assign to a parolee like Evan Ebel, who the DOC identified as high risk. So why did it take five days for anyone from the parole division to respond when Ebel, uh, Evan Ebel actually absconded? Well, we're getting answers and we'll, co of course, reveal what we find as we get them. Covering the world on 7 News now continues. Crews continue sifting through the rubble of that collapsed garment building you see there in Bangladesh. Workers using diggers, cranes to remove concrete rubble to search for more bodies there this morning. More than 500 people have been pulled from the wreckage already and close to 150 people still missing right now. Unofficial reports have that number even higher. One of South Korea's most treasured landmarks back open this morning. Five years ago, the stone and wood southern gate in Seoul was destroyed by an arsonist. Well, it was reopened to its late 14th century glory by a small army of master craftsmen using traditional tools. Hundreds of Seoul residents, as well as politicians, celebrated the return of the gate you see there. By the way, the arsonist is serving a 10-year prison sentence. Prom is one of the biggest nights of the year for a lot of high schoolers, and it was a very special one for this special needs student in Kentucky. The prize she took home on a night she will never forget. 7 News Now, back in two minutes. Welcome back to 7 News Now Saturday morning. Here's a live look. This is uh, near Glendale, California. Look at all that smoke. We've been telling you about the fire. Right now, uh, the last war, we're getting a 75-acre brush fire, and it's still burning out of control this morning. Uh, firefighters 
So far, no word on a uh, percentage for containment, but we ha do know that more than 2,000 homes were evacuated because of this fire. So again, look at all that smoke and firefighters still on scene this morning trying to put this fire out. In the meantime, back here at home, meteorologist Marie McCann, she is live at Civic Center Park this morning for today's Cinco de Mayo celebrations, or this weekend's anyway. It's always a lot of fun, and I'm so glad the sun is out, but temperature-wise is very different from this time last year. That's right. Last year on this date, we had a record high of 88 degrees. Today, it's about 50 degrees cooler when you look at this morning's temperature. So I have the jacket on, but I'm here with Antonio Sanchez. A little cold this morning? Not really. I'm no? actually, I thought it was going to be colder, but yeah. apparently it's, it's tolerable. I'm so always it's cold. So <laughs> it's great. Antonio is with our sister station, Azteca Colorado, okay. and you guys have a big role down here today in uh, Cinco de Mayo Festival. Exactly. We're going to have a booth, both for Seven News and Azteca. You know, come on over. It's a free family event, as we all know. Uh, Seven News talent will be here, our talent will, as well. So it's going to be fun. We're going to be giving away little things for, for audience. And also the, the biggest thing is the weather experience. It's, it attracts a lot of attention from our viewers. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be exciting to have our, all of our viewers be like you, you know, doing weather and, uh, and just discovering what, what's it like to be behind the green screen, but also very important not to wear green as you, as we all know, That's otherwise right. you'll disappear. Cause you do the weather on Azteca. Well. I do the weather as well. And I'm always cautious of not wearing green, even a little speck. <laughs> otherwise I'll, all come out very different. <laughs> and, and these are the opportunities when you can wear green when we're doing the weather. Not exactly. The green exactly. Not and, and also remember about uh, the chili cook off. Right. You know, so it's going to be great. It's it's starting at uh, one. I'll be judging along with Bertha. So this is the first time I try green chili. <laughs> so good luck for me. I don't know what to expect. Well, if you like, I hear there's a taco eating contest tomorrow too. So yeah, we'll be here today and tomorrow. So. If, if I can handle green chili, maybe I can handle all the tacos uh, for tomorrow. So, and I also see that you have the a perfect spot. This is where all the floats are going to be at. So right. you don't have to wait for for the entire parade. That's right. <laughs> We're at the staging area at 14th and Galapago, but the booth will be closer to Civic Center Plaza. Exactly. So, like I said, we're going to be here. Lots of events, free uh, concerts all night until mm -hmm. eight. So come on over and. Let's have fun. Yeah. Cinco de Mayo. It's going to be a great weekend for it. As you can tell right now, we have all this sunshine. That's going to be in the forecast for both today and tomorrow. Although, if you're going to be out early, you may want that jacket. Here's what we have in downtown Denver. Here's the view at Civic Center, rather, City Park, where the skies are blue. We have just a few high, thin cirrus clouds, currently 38 degrees. 30s up and down the I-25 corridor, a little bit cooler off to the east, right near the freezing mark, Burlington, Lyman, and Sterling. But Greeley's at 37, Fort Collins 39. So a cool start, but with all this sunshine, we should be able to warm things up very nicely. Satellite and radar doesn't show a whole lot happening. There's a very weak disturbance that's going to be passing through, which is going to trigger some afternoon clouds and maybe a few showers. And we've been talking about this chance for rain, but it's only at 10%. It appears on the future cast, but not until later on today. So here we are at 9 a.m. It'll be dry, sun with a few clouds and a light breeze from time to time as temperatures warm into the 50s. So through lunchtime to about 2 p.m., there will be more clouds overhead and into the mountains and foothills. That's where you could start to see some very light and isolated rain showers. That could be snow for the highest peaks, maybe Rocky Mountain National Park and close to the Berthoud Pass west of Georgetown as well. Now, 5 p.m., the future cast picks up on a little more activity and a better chance of rain for the foothills. Now, to the east of I-25, notice nothing really shows up, so it should be primarily dry on the plains today. But close to Denver, there's that small chance for one or two passing showers. They would be brief. We're not expecting anything heavy, and they fade out during the overnight hours. Here we are at 7 a.m. Sunday, and I think we're in for a repeat tomorrow of what we have today, sun giving way to a few afternoon showers. Your temperature today will be a little bit cooler than where they were yesterday. We got to 61 Friday afternoon. Today you'll see a lot of 50s on the map with cooler 30s for the overnight hours. Now the average high for this time of year is in the upper 60s. So this is slightly below average, but it's still going to be comfortable. So there's your planner in writing. Sun giving way to a few afternoon clouds and there's that small chance for showers. And as we go to 
um, tomorrow 60 degrees and then for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a little bit warmer going into the uh, upper mid to upper 60s, slight chance for showers. Now we do have a map of where the parade is going to be. Again, we're located at the staging area. This is where the floats are going to be setting up. You can expect for some delays or rather some road closures in around this area, especially around the time the parade is setting up. And as we go into the afternoon hours, the uh, festival goes on from 10 to 8. Roads are still open right now, but you can see where the parade is going to be if you want to take some time to get out here this morning. Again, there's on street parking with the meters. There's also several lots, and you can find out more information on exactly where to park by going online to uh, Cinco de Mayo Denver.com. Christine? All right, looks like a lot of fun. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, here is another live look. We've been talking about the fire going on in Glendale, California this morning. You can still see a lot of smoke there, but fire trucks all along the road. They're, they're trying to put this fire out. Uh, last check, it was 75 acres with thousands of homes evacuated. So far, no reports of homes lost. We'll continue to watch this fire live and give you new information as soon as we get it. We'll be right back after this short break. I think it's Cindy. Oh, sorry about that. All right. Okay. Hi. Yeah, we're good. So get, come around. Come around. And then we can bump back with that, and then I'll make that correction because. Welcome back. It's 748 right now on 7 News Now Saturday morning. Joining me this morning, Cindy McNair from Rocky Mountain Feline Rescue. Also, Dr. Dean Vixman from Evan C. Animal Hospital. We'll get to you, Doc, in just a little bit. Right now, we're talking about Butterball. Yes, Tell Butterball. us about Butterball. Butterball is a 13-year-old uh, chocolate seal point Siamese. He could go home today Aww. to his new home. He's a sweet. Oh, he's wonderful. He's shy. He's like, I don't yeah. want to look at the camera. He's I very, very affectionate. He um, kind of has this craggy old man meow, and it sounds like he's talking a lot of the times. Well, he's a talker. But he's, he's, he nuzzles and cuddles and loves to lay in your lap, and he, he would be a wonderful companion. A wonderful lap As he cat. goes. <laughs> he's like, I just want to get off the yeah. table. I'm not very comfortable. Yeah, but he, he's, he, he's a sweetie. Him. He is. He seems very, very sweet. Hopefully we can find Butterball a good home. <laughs> hey, Dr. Vixman, you're yes. here to talk about people foods, and oftentimes we do feed our pets, even though sometimes it's not suggested, it's not wise to do so, but there are certain ones that we really should not be feeding our pets. Correct. And most of us are pretty familiar with the common ones that we shouldn't feed our pets, chocolate and grapes. Mm -hmm. But today I thought we'd talk about some of the ones that we just don't often think about. Okay. So first would be avocados. Uh, avocados huh. have a okay. product, have a chemical called person in it, and person causes uh, vomiting in dogs. But it's especially toxic to rodents and birds, and can actually even be fatal in those species. Wow! Okay. So we should avoid that. Next would be macadamia nuts. 
macadamia nuts causes vomiting in dogs, also causes fever and tremors in dogs. Okay. And the interesting thing is that the clinical signs usually show up for about 12 hours after ingestion and can even last up to 48 hours after wow. ingestion. Okay. And then finally, uh, we often don't think about milk, but no. most of our pets are lactose intolerant. And so giving our pets milk can actually cause diarrhea. So would that include cheese and any kind of dairy products or it would specifically include, milk? It, specifically milk. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it depends on the cheeses and, mm -hmm. and those products, but specifically milk are the ones that we're talking about. Okay, something to keep yep. in mind so that you can avoid the doctor's office. All right, Dr. Vixman, thank you. To contact Thanks. Dr. Vixman at Evans East Animal Hospital, give them a call, 303-757-7881. For more information on adopting Butterball, you can go to our website, thedenverchannel.com, click on that big red TV button, then look for our link to the Rocky Mountain Feline Society. You are a cutie. Now you're looking at the camera. Okay.